We have a comedian named Brittany Lysing, right. who I just said the name in the intro. I forget how this works. Please welcome Brittany Lysing. <laughs> That's how I could not be a rock star ever. Like, what's happening in the plaza? Can everyone hear me? Is everyone okay? Is everyone having a good night? This is an interesting thing happening up here. This is, uh, this is interesting to watch from the back. And then try to explain tomorrow to my colleagues. I don't, I don't know what's happening. I love the sports section. Uh, uh, normally, this was more interesting. I loved it today, that's not what I was saying. It just sounded like that puppet was on heroin. That, that puppet did a lot of heroin before he got here. That would be like if Kurt Cobain was telling you about sports. I, I really enjoyed it. These, everybody's so talented up here. Something uh, about a puppeteer uh, makes me want to uh, have sex with them. <laughs> just to disappoint my father. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like just, I quit my job to be a stand-up comedian and now I'm having sex with a puppeteer. <laughs> and my father's heart would explode and he would die of sadness. I think is what would happen. It's Christmas, it's the Merry Christmas special. Uh, yeah. Woo! Woo for Christmas is right. It felt weird. Christmas is weird to me. Christmas is an odd thing. I, uh, I work downtown. Does anybody work downtown in the buildings downtown? Yeah. It's eight people. <laughs> you guys, I see a lot of people here, and there's a lot of people that work downtown. Rich people love when inside is outside. Do you know what I mean? They love putting trees in the lobby. There's snowflakes everywhere. They're like, this is so fun to look at nature when I don't have to be cold. This is the merriest Christmas ever. Christmas is an interesting time in my family. Uh, I'm, the, I'm a middle child. I, uh, I have an older brother and a younger sister. I'm currently ranking third favorite child. <laughs> Oh, it's not great. I was sneaking my way into a tidy second, but my brother just got out of rehab. <laughs> and now everybody loves him again. <laughs> Here's the thing. Here's the thing. He wanted to rehab a fun-loving drunk. And then when they shit him out on the other side, he sounds a whole lot like a Facebook quote nobody ever wants to read. <laughs> you know what I mean? So he's trying to be inspirational. He is, especially around the holidays, especially when we all gather. He always wants to say, he always wants to pull me aside and say something to me. And he pulls me aside. He whispers. So I was like, Brad, Brittany, I just see the world in a whole new light. I'm like, oh, you do, do you? Yeah, well, that light's called fucking morning, you dickbag. <laughs> the rest of us have been seeing that light for some time, Koki Tuesday. <laughs> In his defense, in his defense, he is not the only alcoholic in my family. He was just the only one who was court ordered to acknowledge it. <laughs> Everybody else in my family drinks. If you're not drinking, they wonder why. They question you, they think you're either pregnant or depressed. My mother will pull you aside and ask you if you want a cocktail. And you're like, nah, man. Last Sunday, she pulled me aside. She's like, you want a cocktail? I go, no, thank you. She goes, what are you, pregnant? I go, no, mom, sometimes it's just 9.30 in the morning. <laughs> Why don't you lay off me? <laughs> I was discussing with my mother uh, after a few cocktails what, what feminism means. Do we have any feminists out there? Yeah. She's like, I don't like it. I was like, I don't understand why you don't like it. She's like, oh, I don't really know what it means. I was like, that's how a lot of hateful things start. <laughs> that's, 
you do some reading and get back to me in a week. Yeah. Recommence. <laughs> and she's like, I don't like it. You know what it I go, it just means equality, Mom. And she goes, well, you don't tell people you're a feminist, do you? I go, yeah. She goes, huh. Because I've been getting a lot of people ask me uh, if I'm a feminist. When I don't do this, I work in a trade. So people ask me, all the guys that I work with, they're like, are you a feminist? Wait, they don't ask me like that. <laughs> they're like, you ain't one of them feminists, are you? I'm always like, oh, God, no, I hate women's rights. <laughs> you heard of the uh, burning the bra movement? I actually started the yearning for the bra movement. <laughs> I say, strap them puppies down and leave the decision to the big boys. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm a girl. Like, you get that I'm a girl, right? <laughs> Those super weird conversation. We were having a group discussion at work, and somebody was like, well, hold on, wait. People come up with, like, really weird ways to debate this subject. They're like, well, what if you were in a burning building? <laughs> like, okay. Go on. <laughs> like, and a, and a woman firefighter had to rescue you. Would you want a lady firefighter to rescue you from a burning building? <laughs> like, I don't know if you know this about your highly unlikely scenario, but I'm in a burning building. <laughs> I'm gonna vote yes. <laughs> Are my options just yes or no? Yeah. Yeah, please come get me. <laughs> so then he backs it up with this doozy. He goes, oh yeah, well name me five people, five women, who you think could carry you down the stairs of a burning building. And I go, I'll top you. I could name you six Orange is the New Black characters that could carry my ass up the Space Needle. <laughs> super awkward conversation. <laughs> it's interesting though. I, 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 I do believe in equal rights. I, I do believe in feminism. I love that kind of stuff. Uh, me, myself, though, I don't think I'm a great representative of it. I'm lazy and I'm kind of dumb. And the older I get, the harder that becomes. You know what I mean? When you're a dumb kid, that's not hard. Like people are just like, ah, you'll grow out of it. <laughs> when I have to like hold down a job and answer very serious questions, I'm gonna tell you this right now, every time I get asked a serious question and I'm not prepared an answer, I'm fucking lying to you. <laughs> I'm lying straight to your face. I don't even care what the repercussions are. I'm just like, I hope they don't find out that I'm stupid. And then I just make up an answer. <laughs> I've also had a weird uh, stage in my life where I would just trade responsibilities for blowjobs. You know what I mean? Like, I like a nice yard. I kind of want a garden. But I don't want to fucking do it. So if anybody wants to come over to my house <laughs> and mow my lawn once a week, I'll suck your dick about it. I'll do it. <laughs> I think that's my right. <laughs> that's how I'm arguing this. <laughs> Every time you feel dumb though, Every time you feel stupid, there's always a, a situation in life that'll bring you back out of the dumps where you meet somebody and you go, <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> I got this shit down pat. <laughs> One of my favorite places in the world to go is Montana. And that's where this happened. <laughs> I love going to Montana because I like to camp. Uh, it's, a, it's a lovely place. The, the summer is beautiful there. The lakes don't, there's not very many people in the lake. All that means is you can drink and drive your boat. That's, me. That's what that means. But I was down there uh, with some friends and uh, it was getting late. I said to my friend, oh, we should grab a beer or we should just go walk along the beach. It's beautiful to look at the lake. You know, the moon will come out. You see the stars reflecting on the water. It's gorgeous. She says, yeah. We poured ourselves in a, a cocktail. We, mixed it. we brought it. We were walking along the beach. We were admiring everything. 
We're laughing, we're chuckling. It gets quiet for a second. And I hear the scariest sound I think I've ever heard in my life coming out of the woods, which was just, hey! <laughs> Y'all ain't from around here, are you? <laughs> I looked at my friend, she looked at me, I said, uh, no sir. He goes, where are y'all from? I said, well, we're from uh, Calgary, Alberta. And like it didn't exist, he just went, nope. <laughs> I go, yeah, I am. He goes, where is it? I pointed up, I said, uh, Canada. And he goes, oh my God, y'all are a long ways away from home. <laughs> I was like, sir, I'm four and a half hours away from home. I go, you can't possibly be from Montana. He goes, nope, I'm from Kentucky. I'm like, you're a super long ways away from home, bud. What are you doing in Montana? And he said the funniest thing I've ever heard in my whole life. He just goes, well, mom and pa was fighting and bickering, so I up and done moved clear across the country. And I've been drunk ever since. <laughs> I knows where it's at. <laughs> I, uh, I'll tell you this before I go. I uh, heard a commercial on the radio for Tim Hortons. Blew my mind. <laughs> Guy comes on the radio and he goes, here are Tim Hortons. We believe that you, the customer, deserves a fresh cup of coffee in every pot of coffee. <laughs> so as soon as we're done brewing that pot of coffee, we immediately change the filter. And then I was like, yeah, that's how you make fucking coffee. <laughs> what are we doing, Tim Hortons? Are we just marketing basic food regulations? <laughs> that's not even my favorite part. My favorite part is knowing that there were 30 people sitting around a boardroom table. And one guy was just like... <laughs> and he never gets picked. <laughs> they decided to throw him a bone one day and they were like, McTavish? <laughs> he's like, you guys just think we should tell him we changed the filters? <laughs> And then 29 other full-grown adults were like, to the radio! <laughs> the people must know! <laughs> that to me is like if you walked into a hospital, the nurse grabbed you by the hand, she led you down a hallway, she pointed at a bed and said, here, lay down here. Oh, you should know that the last person that stayed in this bed died of a very infectious disease. <laughs> But here at the hospital, <laughs> we believe that you, the patient, deserves a fresh pair of sheets in every bed. <laughs> Have you ever thought about putting that on the radio? <laughs> I don't go to Tim Hortons anymore. It's got nothing to do with that commercial, really. It's got everything to do with that woman that exists in the lineup in front of you every single morning. You know the one who has to turn around and tell you about her shitty day? She's like, oh man, traffic's crazy, am I right? You're like, yeah. She's like, oh, I couldn't get the kids out of bed. <sighs> what a nightmare. <laughs> I'm having a bad, <laughs> having a real bad day. You're like, you know what, Deb? We're all having a real bad day. I don't know why, because it's seven o'clock in the morning. <laughs> We're all lined up to buy a thing to keep us awake to do a thing nobody wants to do. So I want you to shut the hell up and order your steam tea. <laughs> but I got a sassy lady turn around one time. She was like, oh yeah, Miss Perfect? Well, what's your idea of a perfect day then, if this isn't it? <laughs> like, that doesn't really make sense, Deb. <laughs> when you wrote this joke, you should have thought of that. <laughs> and she's like, what do you, what's your idea of a perfect day? The thing is, nobody's really asked me that before, you know? I'm getting a little older, and I think I'm getting simpler in my age. I think maybe my idea of a perfect day is just, you know, maybe I wake up around noon. <laughs> and I'll sleep in. Maybe a stranger comes over between the hours of one till two and fucks me through a hole in my sweatpants. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.
We just watched some full house reruns. I don't know. You guys put a lot of